Hi friends, I hope you are all having a good weekend. Um, so I am back with an update on the system in the Bay of Bengal that I have been tracking for the past few days. And uh, the question that we have been asking is whether that system will uh, get to a cyclone status or not. So uh, if you checked out my video that I posted on May 1st, uh, this was the last slide where I had given the final thoughts after looking at all the dynamics. And uh, on that day, I said that cyclone formation looks very unlikely. And uh, at the most, it will develop into a deep depression and then it will weaken. And the reason was because of low convective activity that was seen in the Bay of Bengal. And uh, uh, I also said that there is no major impact for Indian coast. Okay, the east coast uh, uh, covering Tamil Nadu, Andhra and uh, Odisha and West Bengal. Uh, so if at all a depression forms and Andaman Islands would uh, likely get some heavy rains. That's what we had uh, kind of concluded on that day. So now today I will talk uh, again uh, mostly the dynamics and then one or two slides I will give my final opinion. So looking at the general dynamics, uh, so uh, once again we are going to look at the four important synoptic features which are the MGM movement, the equatorial Rossby wave, the equatorial Kelvin wave and the ITCZ movement. Okay. Uh, so let us start and let us look at the current conditions that are prevailing in the Andaman Sea. Uh, so what I have shown here is this is the cloudiness uh, chart or the image. Uh, so these uh, purple patches uh, mean or pink patches mean high cloudiness. Uh, and yellow patches means uh, also high cloudiness and the gray is the low cloudiness all right uh, so if you see this is where the line the black line is where the itcz is right now the reason i'm saying that is because i can see two circulations one in our north indian ocean which is the cycling circulation and other in the southern indian ocean which is the uh, which is also a cycling circulation so this system which is in the southern uh, hemisphere is not allowing the itcz to move northward essentially the itcz right now should have moved northward but it has not it so it is struggling to move because there is another system which is being uh, kind of formed in the south indian ocean so that's why itcz has been maintaining it maintaining its position close to very uh, close to the equator for the past few days and it has not show it is not showing any signs of movement and that is one of the reasons why the system is also the system in uh, bay of bengal our our system which is which is of interest to us this particular one is not uh, 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 growing at a rapid pace it is a very very slow progress and that's because itcz is not helping in the convection so basically uh, when the itcz is here the convective activity is here the ascending cell of the hadley cell is here and the descending cell is here uh, so since that ascending cell is very close that's why there is not much momentum to this system and hence it is growing very very slowly okay so please understand that itcz is not in a very favorable position right now and then if you look at the two images between uh, May 1st and May 3rd, and this is where the genesis point was when IMD announced the low pressure system. Today, if you see, it, the system has already weakened a bit, right? And this weakening is uh, is something that I expected because one thing is the ITCZ is not very, um, is not giving the expected momentum, right? And the, the other thing is this is the, uh, the, the other cyclone that is, uh, the, not cyclone, sorry, other system in the southern hemisphere, uh, which is not allowing the ITCZ to move upwards towards uh, uh, northwards basically so this itcz is one of the reasons uh, so uh, the second thing is uh, you must be wondering even though the sst temperatures are very high of the order of 20, 30 31 uh, uh, throughout the bay of bengal uh, basin then why is there is no convective activity correct so that is that's uh, that's something you must be wondering so the answer for this question lies in a very um, um, sophisticated uh, aspect because well, you should understand that ocean is just the source, okay? Ocean is giving the heat. Atmosphere has to pick up the heat, correct? So it's a coupled system. So ocean will provide the heat, atmosphere has to take it up to to start the convection and uh, intense convection to uh, either uh, form a depression or a cyclone or whatever system it may churn out, okay? So one thing that could be happening is that the ocean is providing the heat, but atmosphere is also not able to pick up the heat because atmospheric temperature above the ocean is also very close to the ocean SST. Right. So, for instance, if ocean is at 30, atmosphere is at 29, then it's only one uh, degree difference, right? So the so the convection is not very strong. The convection will be strong if ocean is at 30 and atmosphere is at 25, right? There is a big gradient and then there will be strong convection. And that is reflected in this MJO. MJO is nothing but a tropical wave that moves e uh, west to east uh, throughout the globe. And it covers all the basins, right? Starting from Atlantic, 
to Indian Ocean to uh, Pacific, right? So if you see this, this suggests that the convective activity is not strong between ocean and atmosphere because both these models, ECM, ECMWF and GFS, show that the MGO is weakening, right? Because as it comes on to this inner circle, MGO is is weakening and it is not staying in our basin, which is our Indian Ocean basin. Uh, it has moved away from our Indian Ocean basin, right? So the convection has been suppressed. So this particular weakening that I showed, okay, is primarily because ocean and atmosphere coupled uh, system is not allowing for convection to take place and MGO clearly shows that, okay, there is no intensification that is going to happen, okay. And also the MGO has moved away from our basin and is in a very weak state, okay. So this is one, uh, this is the second thing, ITCZ is weak, MGO is not favorable, that means there is no active convection between ocean and atmosphere, uh, the active convection in the sense there is no intense convection that is happening. Okay, so this is the second point. Third point is that you look at the ocean SST and its anomaly, you will clearly see that the ocean SST, the seven day change, basically how it was seven day uh, versus today, you see that there is a lot of cooling in the Sumatra coast, which I have been seeing in the past videos as well. I have been showing this uh, in the past videos. This means that the ocean Kelvin wave is not very strong because if the ocean Kelvin wave was strong, then you should, you would have expected some warming and that would have given you some convection. And this exactly reflects in the MJO also because if this was warmer, then MGO would have been stronger. Okay, so the anomaly is showing that there is not much convection. There's only some uh, uh, some convection happening in the south, way, south so in the southern way. But once the system, I mean, so again the system if it doesn't uh, start with a very strong convective activity, then by the time it reaches here, it will not it will not become a very strong system so cyclone cyclonic so a, a system becoming a cyclone is kind of ruled out almost 90 percent probability that it will not become a cyclone okay because there is not much favorable conditions for it to become a cyclone all right so these are the three things that i want to bring to your attention uh, and these are the dynamics which are playing out since uh, end of april okay and nothing much has changed all right uh, the last thing is if you look at the OLR anomalies, which is again the outgoing long wave radiation, which where it means that blue is high cloudiness and red means low cloudiness. So this means uh, convection is active. This means convection is suppressed. So starting from May 1st, uh, from 1 to 5, there is going to be some weak convection. After that, the convection has stopped, correct? That is what the OLR anomalies are also saying because outgoing radiation will, uh, so that means the cloudiness will reduce, okay? And that is very consistent with whatever dynamics we have sp spoken so far. ITCZ is not very active, uh, sorry, is not giving the push needed for convection. MGO is not uh, um, uh, strong and the surface temperature anomalies are also not very strong, okay? So this, uh, everything fits in and everything kind of gives this scenario, which is the, so I'm going to give two scenarios. The first scenario, which has the highest probability, I'm putting 75% probability to this particular scenario being, um, uh, which will pan out in the next few days is that given the current dynamical conditions, whatever dynamics we have talked about, cyclone formation is not possible until May 8th for sure. Okay. And this is my personal and the, uh, opinion and the most likely scenario. The system at most may become a depression, but this also uh, depends on the ocean uh, surface temperature and how the ocean and atmosphere reacts to reacts with each other. Okay. Uh, but not a cyclone because again, the convective power is very low. Okay, it will move northwest uh, because MGO is in a in a phase five. Uh, it will move towards Indian coast, but then it, because of the unfavorable ITCZ and MGO, it will weaken and dissipate in the ocean without affecting the Indian coast. So this is the most likely option. Okay. Now let us say say that if it sustains as a low, okay, if it doesn't weaken very much, it still sustains as a low before uh, uh, coming to the southwest bay, uh, and it's uh, it uh, it is a low pressure till April, uh, May 9th. Okay, then what will happen? The second scenario will kick in. Okay, the, the chances of second scenario are low as of now, but let us discuss that as well. Second scenario is that the system is still in a low pressure um, uh, kind of a zone till May 9th, which is, I'm saying that the, the, the system starts from here and it is maintaining its low pressure uh, uh, strength up to, uh, up to the point where it comes to the Southwest Bay. Okay, so then what may happen is the ITCZ could have moved slightly up. Let's say that this system, which is in the southern hemisphere, uh, kind of separates off and it allows for ITCZ to move up because this system is not allowing for ITCZ to move up right now, the southern hemisphere system. So let us say by May 9th, the system moves down and it allows the ITCZ to move up. Then there could be some convective push from the ITCZ, but the MJO will still be weak, okay? Because 
the temperatures of ocean atmosphere seems to be not very conducive the gradients are not very high okay so if the itc it moves itc it moves up around may 11th 10th or 11th then there is a chance that the system may become a deep depression but again it will not become a cyclone okay i have clearly written that it may become a depression or a deep depression but it will not become a cyclone and it will move towards bangladesh coast but not as a cyclone okay it will only move as a de depression system okay so it is not a cyclone uh, that is, i am i am not expecting any cyclone to form in the bay of bengal at least until may 12th or 13th okay but in both these scenarios one thing is very clear no cyclone and india coast will not be affected at all okay so as of now we don't have to worry uh, tamil nadu doesn't have to worry uh, andhra uh, orissa west bengal we don't have to worry at all okay the cyclone formation is very 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 low probability okay so if you understand the dynamics then you will clearly see <laughs> why i am saying that all right so uh, finally i think the reason lot of people were panicking was because ecm in its previous run was showing some cyclone which was moving towards um, odisha right but it in the latest run if you see which is may 3rd in today's run it has taken it off and this completely falls with the dynamics that we just talked about right and this is the correct ecmwf run that um, uh, i mean that seems exactly right to me this was all false there was something that ecmw was picking up and it was creating lot of panic among the people okay so today's run is the right run and looking at the dynamics uh, so i think we are uh, we are uh, we are clearly uh, um, hoping that there is no cyclone formation and also uh, that there, there, is, there is not going to be any uh, major impact to the uh, east coast right so this is my uh, opinion right and finally <laughs> don't think that uh, the models are confusing you if you just look at the dynamics and if you put everything together then things will fall, fall into place our basin is not very complex it has complex uh, it has lot of complexity but if you understand what dynamics to look for then maybe you will not get confused and it will uh, help you in look uh, looking at a much longer perspective since april 25th if you look at my twitter tweets since april 25th i have been saying that there is not going to be any cyclone formation and so far it has come true okay so far we have not seen any cyclone right so please uh, i urge all of you to look at the dynamics rather than just believing the models uh, model runs uh, blindly that's uh, that's going to be very dangerous and that is going to create a panic okay and the final thing i will say is the reason this icmwf is doing these kind of things is because there was a article that came out that ecmw's forecast may be incorrect or it may it could impact the weather forecast because of the drop in aircraft observations okay so ecmw itself has put this kind of a um, uh, uh, <coughs> scenario that their forecast could have some impact okay so this is the reason why i feel that ecmw was giving these kind of incorrect dynamics okay so with that i would close and uh, like i said there is no cyclone formation expected and there is no threat to our east coast all right if you like this video uh, please share with your friends and also subscribe to my channel and please uh, give your feedback in the comment section on the uh, youtube channel thank you so much i will be back with more updates later bye